Hi everyone, today we're going to do an AP bot test, so let's start with section 1 and question number 1. It says, which point on the curve in the diagram above best represents the carrying capacity of the environment for the population shown? Well, what that really means is where the population is, is leveling up, or where it is becoming relatively constant. Um, for this whole part, the population is just growing uh, exponentially, but as it reaches point E, it's just becoming relatively constant. So the answer is E. Question 2, it says, assume that genes A and B are not linked. If the probability of allele A in a gamete is one half, and the probability of allele B in a gamete is also one half, then the probability that, get, that both A and B are in the same gamete is. Well, the reason why it says that they are linked is that if they were uh, actually linked, um, they would have uh, moved together, and the uh, probability of having them in the same gamete would be one half, but since they're not uh, linked, then the probability will, will be um, the, multi uh, the multiplication of uh, one half times one half. So the answer is A. Question number three it says a couple has five children, all sons. If the woman gives birth to a sixth child, what is the probability that the sixth child will be a son? Well, this question is just measuring what you know about. Um, genetics and um, and you should know that anything that happened in the past is never ever going to affect the future so whether they, whether they had all sons or all daughters that's never ever going to affect uh, the future which is the sixth child so the answer is one half question number four says all of the following are true about the earth's ozone layer except it shields earth from most ultraviolet radiation well that's true Remember, we're looking for the wrong answer, so that's not our answer. Uh, you should also know that uh, CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, is destroying the ozone molecules and making the, um, making the ozone layer thinner and thinner by time, uh, which makes us more susceptible to skin cancer. Um, it is composed of O3, well that's definitely true. Uh, answer choice C says its thickness has remained constant over time. Well, no, it's not becoming constant over time. I just said that it's becoming thinner, so the answer is C. Which of the following organelles modifies and packages for secretion of the materials produced by the ribosomes? Well, in this one you should know that the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi complex is actually responsible of uh, packaging the uh, proteins that are made by the ribosomes, so the answer is B. Um, question number six says, which of the following types of behaviors describes the way mice find their way through mazes? Well, actually, if you see those mice, mice um, trying out this uh, this maze, you would see them actually failing uh, and having many errors at first. But after several quote unquote trials, uh, they get uh, they get it right. So that's uh, why we call it trial and error. Um, behavior so this is answer choice question number seven says a student using a light microscope observes a cell and correctly decides that it's a plain cell because uh, let's go through the answer choices ribosomes are visible well all cells have ribosomes question uh, answer choice B says an endoplasmic reticulum can be seen well all cells have endoplasmic reticulum the cell membrane is present. Well, it's if it said a cell wall is present, then that might have been the answer, but that is not what is said. Answer choice D says it has a large central vacuole. Well, yes, that is the answer. Plant cells have large central vacuoles um, to maintain the cell um, uh, cell shape or the cell structure, um, and and it also uses it to make uh, the the self uh, relatively isotonic. So the answer is D. Question number eight says, the condition in which there are barriers to successful interbreeding between individuals of different species in the same community is referred to as Latin variation, well that's not the answer. Sterility, well sterility just means that um, individuals of the same species cannot interbreed, so that's not the answer because it says different species. Structural differences, well that's not the answer. 
geographic isolation. Well, geographic isolation uh, can lead to speciation, which leads to reproductive isolation, but it says that they are already different species. So the answer is E, reproductive isolation. Question number nine says, which of the following best describes the parents in a test cross? Whenever you find a test cross, you have to be lo looking for a res recessive phenotype. So let's, and let's go through the answer choices. One individual has the dominant phenotype and the other has recessive phenotype. Well, that is the answer. Both individuals ha are heterozygous. That's not the answer. Individuals have the dominant phenotype. That's not the answer. Both individuals have the recessive phenotype. Well, if both of them are recessive, then the uh, offspring will also be recessive. So that can be the answer. Uh, one of them has to be recessive and the other one has to be anything else, either dominant or heterozygous. Both individuals have unknown phenotypes. Well, we wouldn't know anything about them if, if they're unknown, so that can't be the answer. Um, question number 10 says, members of which of the following are the major primary producers of the marine ecosystem? Yeasts. Well, yeasts are actually um, heterotrophic, so that's not the answer. Sponges are animals, which are heterotrophic as well. Uh, Sporozoans are heterotrophic. Fishes are uh, heterotrophic as well. Diatoms are actually autotrophs. So, um, so that is the answer. Uh, probably sponges can be primary consumers, not primary producers. Um, fishes are probably secondary consumer uh, consumers, not producers. So. Uh, answer is E. Question number 11 says, in sheep eye color is controlled by a single gene with two alleles. When a homozygous brown-eyed sheep is crossed with a homozygous green-eyed sheep, blue-eyed offspring are produced. If the blue-eyed sheep are mated with each other, what percent of their offspring will most likely have brown eyes? Well, that question is different than um, Mendelian questions or Mendelian mating because M Mendel um, discussed dominant and recessive traits but he didn't discuss uh, this uh, this way of, of crossing of having a third uh, color which is a combination of both or is a co-dominant or uh, we can say it's it's the it's the result of, of, of mating both of them. Um, so we'll mate Big B, Big B for a brown eyed sheep uh, because they're homozygous with a homozygous green eyed sheep, so small b, small b. Uh, we'll get uh, all of them Big B, small b, um, Big B, small b, Big B, small b. If it was a normal, um, um, if it was a normal probability of having just uh, one dominant and one recessive, then all of them would have been brown-eyed sheep, uh, sheep which are actually uh, heterozygous. Um, but since uh, we have a third color, uh, uh, which is um, which is blue, then mating. Big B, small B with uh, mating, uh, Big B, small B with Big B, small B would result in Big B, Big B, Big B, small B, uh, Big B, small B, Big uh, small B, small B. So the uh, so the possibility of having brown eyes are on, uh, are only twenty five percent, not three to one as we would have had in the Mendelian mating. So the answer is B. I'll see you in the next video.